Hello, everybody, and welcome to the One Nation of Gamers Hearthstone Summer Circuit. We're about to broadcast the North American Qualifier number four. Of course, my name is TJ Osmakuti Sanders, and I'm joined by Hot Form. How are you doing, Hot Form? Hello, uh, I am doing quite good today. I'm really excited to see some of these matches. Uh, I was just saying to Asimo before the fact that in this first series, nobody has brought a warrior. I was playing in the qualifier for this yesterday, and I think almost every single match there was a warrior. So the fact that these guys have got through, it's going to be some interesting tech choices in their deck that we can study for future use, no doubt. Yeah, it should be a really fun day, and uh, we're starting to get towards the end of of the of the summer circuit. We're getting about halfway through, and uh, so if you guys are just now joining us, if you haven't uh, watched one of the One Nation of Gamers summer circuit matches so far, basically how it works is we have sixteen uh, open qualifier tournaments: eight from North America, eight from Europe. Uh, those sixteen uh, qualifiers lead into four feature eight-man tournaments. Uh, at those eight-man tournaments, the players compete for uh, Geico points, which can get them to the big finals at PAX. And also the winner gets a direct seed into the finals at PAX as well. So across the whole summer, we're giving away $60,000 in prizes. And uh, it's it's been really fun so far. We've seen some great players qualify. Uh, Hot Form, you almost made it through yeah. one of them. You won one of the Opens, and you participated in the feature tournament number one. So uh, how was your experience going through that? I mean, it's tough, right? I got to give a lot of credit to any player that makes it this far. And you can imagine they're hungry for it at this point, right? They've had to beat probably uh, seven series, at least in a row, maybe eight series at this point. Yeah. And they have a few more ahead of them where they face increasingly difficult opponents. So you can imagine they, they really want this. They want the prize money. They want the points. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, of course, uh, since this is North American Qualifier number four, so we're going to have eight total. And you said it. It's a continuation. Basically, this is the top four from the Open Tournament that happened yesterday. Uh, so these players, the decks that they're using are the decks that they competed in the Open Tournament with. Um, and so you might see some decks that are a little bit faster. A lot of players tend to play uh, faster decks when they go through qualifiers. I know how far you're not one of those people. Uh, but there are those people out there that like to play the faster decks when they go through um, but you guys can head over to geico.onog.gg. You can get a lot of information. The link is right down below in the middle of the screen. Uh, you can get information about the tournament, information about Geico points, um, and about the upcoming schedules uh, for the tournaments. And uh, you can also enter in to win an official TSM PC, which uh, TSM, of course, is a sponsor with or is a uh, partner with Geico, just as Team Liquid is, who's helping us run this tournament. And uh, so, if you want your chance to win an official TSM PC, head over to that website. Uh, follow the instructions right in the middle of the of the first page, and uh, you can get a quote from Geico and enter in to win an official PC. But I think we're about to jump into the matches, so we'll take a look at these deck lists. We're actually going to see two Shamans today, Hot Forum. What are yeah. your thoughts on the Shaman class? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I've been experimenting with Shaman a lot, but I haven't found a deck list that's super successful yet, so to see these guys do well with Shaman is going to be really interesting. I'm curious if maybe they brought... Um, the Mech Shaman, which is something of a standard pick these days because it does do really well against Warriors. Um, so maybe that was what they were trying to prey on with it. But if they have some type of mid-range Shaman, I'm really going to be looking closely at the cards. Yeah, so we'll see the other Shaman in the second match of the day. And we're not going to see it in the first match here. It's going to be uh, Dekiz <laughs> on the Druid and VX14 playing what looks to be um, Hunter, and we saw Savannah Highman, so probably mid-range, uh, maybe <coughs> some sort of hybrid Hunter. Uh, wow, double Innervate, always a good starting hand. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot to go with it, but the Keeper of the Grove at least is a pretty good creature that you can use to face off against anything a Hunter's going to play super early in the game. Yeah, wow, he draws an Ancient of Lore, which... Makes that hand look quite a bit better because he can get out an early Ancient of Lore, or if he's using those Innervates early on, then he could refill his hand later on in the game uh, with the Ancient of Lore. But he's just going to go ahead and throw it out there right now. Yeah, that's got to be one of the best top decks. You use so many cards playing those Innervates to get the cards back and get a big creature is just a mm -hmm. dream come true. Yeah, and it's so hard to deal with the Ancient of Lore as well. Uh, I mean, a Kill Command would kill it outright, but still it allows you to. Uh, ramp up really early, force the hunter onto the defensive early in the game, which might buy you some time later on. Mm -hmm. Not Huffer. 
That was probably about the best one for him there. Mm -hmm. Puffer was okay, but it would have died to the Wrath. But this one just can trade, and then he can at least pick it up with a Spider if he wants to. Yeah. And he has potential to snipe the uh, Shaded Nax Rambus here with the with the knife juggler and trading in. Ooh, yeah. He actually has a second juggle or a second set of juggle with the uh, web spurner as well. So we'll see if he gets it. Oh, the final juggle. Oh, wow. wow that hurts. That hurts. I mean, we, sh we shouldn't forget the deck start was really spectacular, but that definitely picks up for VX where he lost a lot of ground and at least he got some value back out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is the the mid-range hunter, it seems. Um, the low theb, I don't think it's put into the hybrid hunter uh, very much. Um, maybe it ha might have some hybrid elements, but we haven't seen them so far. So he's going to be able to have a really strong mid game, especially if he draws into his high mains uh, in the near future. So it might be hard for Deckies to sort of catch up. Yeah, his hand right now is really just focused on dealing damage. Shredder is a great draw. Mm -hmm. So in this match, normally I'd say it's a pretty even fight. It goes a little to the Druid's favor as soon as they have uh, an Innervate in the opening, whereas like Wild Growth is not as successful in this matchup because you mm -hmm. want to be doing something on the early turns. But it's still very close. The Druid tries to turn it around later in the game, and the Hunter just applies pressure consistently, and Freezing Trap can be super useful if he gets a Mad Scientist. <clears throat> yeah. It feels like a lot of times in this matchup, <clears throat> as a Druid, you're winning the game <clears throat> like a, a, a minute or two before, um, or a turn or two, sorry, before your opponent kills you, uh, usually with combo. It usually <clears throat> comes down to the wire in this matchup. Second shade coming out. Hopefully fair is better than the first one. Well, it's so no not juggler to snipe it. Okay, so, I mean, there's a big question on if you want to play the Freezing Trap here. I think, you know, the Shade probably won't attack this turn, so playing the Freezing Trap might not have been necessary, and then he could have got an extra steady shot in. Every little bit of damage like that can make a big difference later. Yeah. And high main is a really big draw, but that's going to have to wait a turn because... Uh, is it lethal? Mm, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Wow. Well, <laughs> never mind. Didn't even need the high main. <laughs> uh, Decky's has got to feel a little bad about that one. He had such a good start, and then things just didn't quite connect for him in the middle into the yeah. big unleash. Yeah, um, I mean, he had uh, the combo in his opening hand, and he never got a chance to use either piece of that, so... Uh, that's a little bit rough, even though he had the explosive start with the double innervates and the Ancient of Lore. Uh, he still didn't have too much to back it up. He did have Harrison in his hand there, which if he had played Harrison instead of Dr. Boom, he would have definitely survived. The Unleash would have been less damage, and the weapon would have been removed. Um, I think Dr. Boom was a pretty reasonable choice. He had Freezing Trap, so you want to try to get the Freezing Trap with the Boom Bot, and it's turn 7, so play Dr. Boom, I guess. But Yeah, he, he played it really fast. As soon as it hit turn seven, we could see on the spectator delay that his turn like ended before we even saw the animation complete. So uh, maybe you should have given that a little bit of extra thought, but uh, there's not really that many times where it'll be turn seven and you don't play Dr. Boom. But uh, he did play really fast. But we are going to move into the next match. It's going to be uh, Dekis who's going to throw out the Druid once again, and VX14 is actually going to uh, do um, throw out the, his Druid as well. Um, okay, well, VX already obviously has a much better start at Wild Growth than <laughs> Innervate and an Ancient of Lore. It's pretty much everything you're looking for. Super yeah. skilled. He threw away the Ancient of Lore. Um, it actually curved out really well for him to mm -hmm. do Wild Growth, Coin, Innervate, Ancient of Lore on turn three. And yeah. now he's left with some creatures that you don't really need the mana for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's since the last patch, there's been uh, some 
uh, issues with the spectator clients uh, for druids um, because of their uh, whenever one of the druids uses a spell where they have to pick one or the other like wrath or uh, keeper of the grove um, sometimes <coughs> it works out so bear with us if there are any issues in this matchup because this is druid versus druid so we're bound to have one of the or at least one <coughs> or two issues throughout this matchup but we'll try and get it up and running as quick as possible when that does happen So he coined, oof, you gotta be regretting throwing away that ancient lore. He coined Wild Growth, he'll invade Harrison. You know, this opening is great for mana, but it's just not gonna apply a lot of pressure unless he gets some really good top decks. Yeah, and ancient of lore, I feel like, is such a, uh, a pivotal card in the mirror matchup. Uh, also, being behind a board is, is a rough thing. Like, he probably was searching for something else to, to drop earlier on, but not having a way to refill your hand is another way that you just fall behind. And especially VX14, he's teching so hard against the weapon classes. He's got Harrison and Ooze. Um, yeah. He needs to, to curve out really well in order to have the same amount of value. But, I mean, he does have really good handle over the board right now. On the other side of things, we see that. Uh... Deckies has some really heavy creatures in his hand. The pilot Skygolem, for example, very difficult to remove, does a lot of face damage, and he has a beautiful 5-6-7 curve if he actually stabilizes the board, which at this point it looks like he will do just fine at it. Yeah, just hero power passing on turn 5 is never something that you want to have happen if you're a Druid player. Turn 5 is usually that power turn where you're playing Druid the Claw or Azure Drake or Lothab or Sludge Belcher or something. Well, he gets a creature finally. He could burn the Innervate here to Wrath the Bear and then trade and he still has board control. Mm -hmm. But playing the Lothab and then the Sky Golem comes down which is going to be pretty frustrating to deal with. Yeah. And then he'd be left with just Force of Nature and Swipe in his hand, which aren't going to get him very far. He'd basically be top decking for a creature the next turn. Oh, and there we go. We can start <laughs> leveling. Yeah. Good spectator problem. Good thing they only have one minion, so we can still see it in between the cards. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Swipe's a good answer here. Probably you get something pretty much worse than a Yeti, but there are occasionally really great cards out of the Sky Golem. Uh, that's not one of them. <laughs> no. Yeah. Unlike, excuse me, unlike Pile to Treader, there's not really any negative things that can come from uh, Sky Golem. The only uh, quote-unquote negative one is the uh, Anubar Ambusher, um, which has a chance to get rid of tempo. It's the 5-5 five -five that... Um, Returns a card to your hand once killed uh, as a death rattle, the the, um, the rogue card. That's the only one that could be considered sort of, quote-unquote, um, like a negative impact on your board. Um, um, there is also it's... Jeeves as well. Oh, yeah, Jeeves as well, yeah. Yeah. That does also have the potential to be uh, bad if you have a lot of cards and your opponent doesn't have any. So that's a good one, yeah. The Hungry Dragon really improved the... Um, Pilot Sky Golem, though, getting a 5 6 out of the Sky Golem is insane. Uh, oh, yeah. Now the Hungry Dragon and the Pit Lord are both 5 6s, so you can get really lucky off of it. Yeah. Okay, well, I uh, can't see Deku's hand, but obviously he has the choices. He should be able to play a pretty reasonable creature here. There we go. Wow, it's a little bit of an awkward turn because he doesn't have any spells to deal with this. No, like, Wrath to be able to play a creature and deal with the uh, Lothab at the same time. And the X-14 is oh. actually getting really close to winning. It almost might be a comfort there that you know you have no way to play around combo, so you'll just play as greedy as you can and hope he doesn't have the combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at this stage, if you're VX14, you sort of just have to say, um, you have to probably all in and hope that he doesn't have something to be able to block damage for the next turn. Yeah. I'm not sure if you would play the BGH, but it seems like Drew the Claw and Charge Face would be the most reasonable play here. It sets you yeah. up for lethal next turn, and 
your strategy you got to go with. Um, yeah. He would not die to combo either. Combo would do 25 damage from the current board. Mm -hmm. Putting him one health off of death to combo so he can afford to be aggressive. Otherwise, he might have to taunt just in case. All right. Well, uh, Dekis does have ways to uh, stop it, but he only has ways to stop a portion of the combo. Uh, oh, no. He's one, one man off. off. Yeah. Hmm. If you play the Emperor. <laughs> Last Play the turn. Emperor and set it for a next turn win, but then you die to just about anything. You die to Druid of the Claw, you die to um, Force of Nature. Uh, so I think just Agent of Lore heal and trade. Yeah, makes sense to me. Because you know he has like one piece, right? Well, you know he doesn't have Savage Roar, that would have killed you last turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is a smart play. Oh, I played the Innervate, though. I guess um, he wants both creatures, because with the, just the Ancient of War, he could Innervate double combo and win next turn. Yeah. This, if he doesn't Hero Power, I think uh, it would have been lethal just with a single combo, because he would have had 27 damage, but... Um, yeah, that seems a little bit weird, but he plays a Sludge Butcher anyway, so it's pretty inconsequential at this point. Yeah, that actually was a better play then, because the Sludge Butcher came down, so now he has an extra creature ready to trade on the current board. Yeah. Double Keeper seems pretty good. Yeah. Only one, one thing in VX is mine. Please draw Savage Roar right now. <laughs> it's... Yeah, a lot of times it feels like it, it's that way in, in these uh, mirrors. It's like uh, there's one player who's sort of the aggressor and then one player who's just trying to stabilize the whole game. And then whoever gets combo with a board first is the, the player that wins. So Savage Roar is the, I think, oh, Dr. Boom. In every yeah. other situation, you'd love to see Dr. Boom in there. But. So, can go for a Doomsayer off the Shredder. I think that's mm -hmm. the only play here. Yeah. And then you're giving up your your condition to win, so it's like feels like a lose lose almost. Really well played to Deckies to have taken this game. VX had wild growth, double innervate, and yeah. uh, Deckies wasn't even close to that. But Deckies takes the game, which normally in a druid match, that's almost unheard of to get by a double innervate. And it just ended up VX didn't quite have enough cards though, I think. Especially with so many heavy creatures in his hand, in his early hand. He had uh, like Ancient of Lore, a piloted Sky Golem, Druid of the Claw, all in like, his opening hand, which is something that you don't usually come back from because you usually fall too far behind on board and you just don't have the comeback mechanics to be able to do it. And I think he realizes that Doom Series is going to be his only out. And doesn't get the Doom Sayer, Ancient Watcher instead. So uh, Deki gets puts a little smile on his face. And he's going to tie up the series at uh, one to one. Yeah, pretty convincing win. Yeah, five HP left. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit rough, um, but. So we're going to move into the next match. VX14 still has to find a win with that Druid. And what the rest of Deki's lineups, he doesn't really have many of the weapon costs. I guess Shaman is pretty good. Um, but we saw that VX14 actually teched Harrison Jones and Ooze into his uh, Druid deck. Hope Probably seeing that he was going to be facing a lot of Hunters, a lot of uh, Patron Warriors, maybe some Rogues moving forward in the in the open bracket, which these guys' decks are continuing from. Um, but it's not going to help him much against Warlock. Could help him against Shaman, though. I just had some incorrect technical settings. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the Shaman is a very good match against Druid. It's almost like the Shaman has completely different matchups here. The Priest is going to be about as most difficult than Druid would be about the best. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So VX14 also has the Priest. It was kind of funny. I was looking over the deck list of the players that are playing today, and um, I was kind of confused because a lot of players in these open brackets, you see a lot of Patron Warriors, you see a lot of Hunters. Uh, it's not very often where you see like a Priest in the top four or you see two Shamans in the top four. Um, and only one out of the four players that we're going to be seeing today actually brought Warrior, which uh, over the first three weeks or the first three qualifiers for each region, we saw mostly like it was felt like Warlock, Warrior, Rogue or Warlock, Warrior, Hunter was such a popular lineup. Uh, but moving into today, it's a little shaking things up a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely looking different. So the zoo, it's well, it's a demon zoo warlock versus priest. Um, yeah. Shadow playing is really gonna help against the uh, the early aggression from the zoo, but a lot of this matchup is just super draw dependent. Uh, on the side of the priest, um, a lot of times they can deal with the early aggression. But the thing about the mid range zoo is that a lot of times uh, it's mid range zoo for a reason. They just come back in the mid game with lots of strong creatures. Things like Imp Gang Boss and Pile of the Shredder can be hard for priests to deal with if they're using their removal early on to try and deal with the like the first wave of aggression. So it's um, it's all about them drawing into ways to prolong the game in the mid game. And Deathlord is a fantastic tool to be able to do that. It's going to buy him a lot of time. He's just hoping that nothing big comes from it once it finally does get taken down. But he's going to be able to buff this up with Power Word Shield. He's going to be able to use it as sort of a draw engine. And uh, it's going to help him really get through this mid-game uh, without uh, taking any punishment whatsoever. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I've just been having some microphone issues. I've uh, been working on that. Asimo, of course, carrying the team. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> Your voice started. sounds a lot crisper now, though. Yeah, definitely. I was using the wrong one before, so it's a work in progress. So this board is pretty annoying to deal with, but again, just being able to get through this um, this part of the match is... Uh, really important, and he's drawing nearly three cards every turn because he's being able to heal up his Death Lord for two draws from both Norshire clerics, uh, plus uh, the natural draw that he gets. So uh, he's going to put himself in a pretty good position moving in to mid game. Still hasn't taken a point of damage, so uh, he's looking pretty good. And he also has the Light Bombs to be able to stabilize uh, because these Death Lords are really resilient to the Light Bombs because they only end up taking two damage. So Dekis is basically going to hope for once he finally does manage to get through these Death Lords that they're going to have such big creatures pop out that uh, VX14 is not going to really be able to deal with it. Okay, I just switched back to the lower quality mic for now so you guys can hear me. Enjoy my low quality voice. Okay, so where are we in this match? Double light bomb in his hand. Double light mm -hmm. bomb priest in general. I mean, the priest deck uh, has a lot of diversity for what you can bring with priest, right? So that's going to be pretty helpful in this match, though. Warlocks don't play a lot of high health, low attack creatures. Yeah. And he's trying to do as much damage as possible, but this, wow, just plays right in to Holy Nova. And you can see Deki is he rears back in horror. These players can actually see each other's reactions. They can um, look at each other's webcams as they're as they're playing. Uh, so like VX could can see how mad Dekis is and maybe throw in an extra emote at the end of his turn to add to the <laughs> tilt effect if he uh, so chooses. I, I honestly I don't think it's possible for Dekis to come back at this point. Once the priest is drawn, oh he could have stolen the egg. I'm kinda of surprised at that. He obviously has an even better play in mind. Um, but yeah, once the priest has this many cards against an aggro deck, there's just so many options in his hand that yeah. it's difficult not to make a good play at this point. Mm -hmm. He can shadow with death anything that comes out, Cabal, Shadow Priest, 
anything below two attack that comes out. Uh, he can shrink Meister Cabal if, uh, say, he plays like another Paladin Shredder. Uh, so there's just so many ways that he could punish deckies. And even if he taps every turn, he's still not going to be able to catch up on cards for a really long time. So I think you're right. I, I don't really see a way that uh, deckies, unless he draws like all his big threats in the next couple turns in the VX14, he can hope that he's running Mech Priest and his hand is just a bunch of Clockwork Gnomes. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Priest can really just do anything he wants here. He mm -hmm. can steal the Wolf, be the full health. I don't I don't think there's any possible way back in the game. Uh, Priest is one of those classes you need to pressure early and deny them from having a board. Yeah. And his start was okay. It's just that VX14 just had a, such a great start. He, uh, the Death Lord draw was really what turned it around because other than that, he really didn't have anything to play. He played the Northshire Cleric and he had the Shadow Lord Pain to do with the Knife Struggle on turn two. But if he he drew into the Death Lord next turn, he was able to just Power Word Shield that up, use two Northshire Clerics to just use his Death Lord as a draw engine. And by the time it was actually killed, he had just gained so many, uh, so, such a big card advantage or such a big board advantage that whatever came out from the Death Lord just didn't matter. And that's why it's such a strong card in Priest. Yeah, I've been experimenting with the Death Lord myself some lately. It really punishes all the super aggressive decks that are around right now, the Hunters, the Paladins, all these classes that are bringing so many small creatures. And it's just such a satisfying three drop. You know they can't kill it, and you're going to get to heal it. You use your Priestly powers to win the game. Yeah. Especially if you can hit a Velen Chosen on it. I, I played around with the... Uh, for a while, there was the Chinese aggro priest that used like inner fire and divine spirit, uh, but it also used like double mind blast and stuff like that. And it was really crazy to like win on like turn five with your divine spirit, inner fire, um, two swings with a death lord. So it also has some really fun and interesting uh, uses as well. Yep, so we are just going to take a quick uh, one to two minute break before we start the next game to fix a issue we have here. So we'll see you guys in just a minute. And then, fuck. <laughs> Okay, um, the mic set. I have it boosted all the way now.
everybody, welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit North American Qualifier Number Four. Once again, I'm Osmo, joined by Hot Form. And Hot Form, let's hear that crispy fixed mic voice. <laughs> Hopefully, it sounds a little better now. Ah, that we yes. Sort it out. <laughs> Get it's, to hear the juicy, succulent sound of my voice. Mm -hmm. It's it's fantastic. So uh, we just saw VX14 take out uh, Deckies um, in the Priest versus Warlock matchup. So he has a two-one lead currently in our first semifinal of the day. We're about to jump into the fourth match of this series. It is going to be Deckies throwing out the Warlock once again, and uh, VX14 is going to go back to the Druid. So match point here for VX14. Okay, so uh, the Mulligans are really important. They just whip through those Mulligans. The Mulligans in this match are very important, one of the biggest deciders of how the game's going to play out. Uh, we can see the VX started with Wild Growth. He kept... Swipe and Wrath, knowing that he wants to be prepared to remove something. Uh, yeah. And the Druid of the Claw, interestingly, which I guess he hopes to play on curve with that, but that one's not quite as clear to me because it doesn't work out as neatly. Maybe he feels like in the first game he got greedy with his mulligans in the Druid game, and so now he's thinking maybe I should just keep drops while I have them so I don't run into the same situation I did last time where I just ran out of juice on turn five. It's really interesting that he wrathed the Void Walker. Um, it did work quite well because Deki's hand was a whole bunch of spells, but mm -hmm. normally you would think Wild Growth first, and then I take the one damage from Void Walker. If he plays Knife Juggler or something better to wrath, I can hit that target on the next turn instead. Yeah. Uh, but he's going to curve out pretty well. He's going to be able to deal with the uh, Flame Imp with one of the Keepers of the Grove here. And of course, he has Druid of the Call to follow it up next turn. Uh, can be able to get dealt with with the implosion, but he does have Swipe to be able to deal with that as well. Let's see if it rolls. Oh, Ooh. a four. <laughs> well, that certainly helps. That yeah. also gives him enough stuff on the board that when the Druid of the Claw is played, uh, he can trade in and Bane of Doom it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is... And it also means he didn't have to trade in the Divine Shield from the Argent Squire. So it, mean, it makes Swipe weaker. It keeps a creature on the board uh, to get buffed up by Defender of Argus or Abuse of Sergeant or Dire Wolf Alpha. The RNG is certainly coming into effect here. We had the 4 damage implosion, and now I feel like Bane of Doom. Oh, the Dire Wolf's quite good, too. Yeah, the thing about Dire Wolf is that uh, he's not doing anything else. If he plays Dire Wolf, he's just tapping and hoping to draw into something. So I, I like that Bane of Doom better just because it just fills up the mana more. Oh no! <laughs> Punished for well, the four implosion. I believe that's the second worst demon you can get. The only thing worse is the Blood Imp. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think that's. Yeah, since you can't get the Sense Imp. Demons Imps or the Implosions Imps. Um, VX has had a common problem with his Druid, where he has a whole bunch of mana, but not a lot to play. Yeah. I mean, this is okay. It'll get cleared for sure, but he does have the swipe still in his hand, so... Yeah, I think Implosion's really likely, and then you can swipe the Wolf to at least recover the entire board. Yeah, that's not too bad. And I think Deckies might have made the read that there was no swipe. Because in first in, his first implosion went by without a hitch, sort of. Um, but uh, he does still um, trade in to make sure that it's just not quite as as weak to the swipe. Tactical play there. Ops to take the extra damage on the Warlock's face, and he'll return and take two damage on his own face. Double Doom Guard in the hand. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> oh, he oh. got it. Wow. I'm impressed. I guess you didn't. he didn't really have many other choices. Um, at some point, you just have to say, you know, screw it and just go for it. Uh, because those Double Doom Guards aren't going away. So his hand wasn't the greatest. Uh, like he, what he discarded Defender of Argus and... Um, Gang Boss. Gang boss. So I, I guess those are pretty valuable creatures, but at some point you just have to say, I'm not going to get away with these Doom Guards without discarding at least something. 
he did have a, a perfect mana play there of Gang Boss Argus to get the 3-5 Gang Boss, um, which I think would be pretty tempting, but uh, obviously this worked out. He had what he needed, he had his confidence, and it paid off pretty huge. Yeah. And we also have to talk about BX14. That one problem that he had with having a lot of mana but not drawing into stuff. He gets the Ancient of War right on time. He's able to refill his hand at least a little bit. Wow, and second Ancient of War as well. But this is a scary board, and he's at 14 health. Can you even do anything about the board? Like swipe and shredder, but the swipe will only kill one creature. He's looking at, yeah, one damage off of dying right now, so... Mm -hmm. Hmm, that's pretty tough. She probably wants to play a creature. I mean, drawing cards with the Ancient of the Lord would be quite tempting, too, because you already have one part of the combo, so getting yeah. the full combo at least gives you potential to win with the Shade. Yeah, but if you draw into duds, then you're going to be in a really tough position. But I think you have to sort of make the play to, to try and win here. Sort of goes with the more defensive play in this in this scenario. Well, I think that was a pretty reasonable play. Yeah. It ends up that he almost faces off against the Doom Guard. He's hoping for like maybe a Wrath to pick up that final damage. All right. With the he's playing Void Caller in the deck too, right? We haven't actually seen a Void Caller, but. It's a bit of like a heavier demon deck, so it wouldn't surprise me if he has it. I think he's actually one damage off killing him. Because it'd be 8 plus 6 plus the one from the hero power. It'd be 15. With a uh, Drew the Claw <laughs> Charge Savage Roar. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. That's rough. Force of Nature off the top would have been... Uh, would have been lethal there by far, so... He does. It wasn't as far behind in this game as it may have appeared in the last turn because Dekis has actually been tapping quite a bit so far this game. He played the early Flame M, so he's taken a lot of residual damage. Ooh. Well, that's a good creature of yeah. the Shredder. <laughs> you don't want to leave that up if you're if you're Dekis. It's pretty much a it has taunt in in this scenario. Just because the uh, Savage Roar does a buttload of damage. He waited till the rope was burning to draw his card. Now he doesn't have enough time to see it, I think, before the animations are over. Personally, I, I think the Druid of the Claw was a little better there. It would have protected the 3-2 from dying. Mm -hmm. Beasts of Argents are actually a really fantastic draw, just because he can activate the egg. And okay. use that to trade in and put a little bit more power on the board to try and close out the game next turn. He thinks a while before tapping into combo range, but he realizes that if he had it, it would he would have had it. He would have used it last turn. So he's going to try and put him on not having the damage to or not having the the skill to top deck it. Hmm. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's not going to help. Um, playing the silence might mean that he doesn't have lethal anymore because of the taunt. So he'll hero power, one of the two ones. He'll have uh, eight damage next turn, I think, and VX will be at ten. Yeah. Yep. And he will have one more chance to, to draw into it. Uh, he can even just play Harrison Jones to try and get a creature on the board because he's still on yeah he still wouldn't be dead uh, yeah he would be one damage off lethal if he played the yeah. Harrison there well Dekis doesn't off. draw into it so how many cards does VX14 have left you can see the stress on VX's face here just, oh, please, give me the force of nature. I have two health. Give it to me. 
it seems really reminiscent of the Druid versus Druid match where he was trying to top deck the Savage Roar for like three turns over and over again. But this time yeah. it's the Force of Nature. Hmm. Do you play the Flame Imp here? I mean, with three cards in VX's hand, you must know that there's going to be some damage in there that he's been saving up. I think I probably wouldn't play it. And you have only one attack needs to get through, really. Yeah. He's, he's been through both Ancient Wars. Oh, he got yes. it! Wow. <laughs> uh, slamming yeah. his hands in. Happiness yeah. there. And Deki's nose, because uh, we said they can see each other's reactions. So before the Force of Nature even comes out, uh, you can tell that he just knew that the game was over. So VX14, he is going to take the series. So he is going to move on to the finals of the North American uh, Open number four and doing it with Priest. So not something that we've seen very much so far in the summer circuit. Yeah, we didn't get to see the Shaman played, which I guess we'll get to see in the third place match. Yeah, well, potentially. I mean, he might lose before he gets to play the Shaman, but I really, really want to see the Shaman because uh, I want to see what actually uh, consists of that deck. But, um, yeah. uh, of course, VX14 is going to move on to the finals. The next match is going to be um, Vinib, a Brazilian player, versus uh, Powder from Team Trig. So the winner of that will go on to face VX14. Uh, the loser of that will face Deckies in the elimination match. So... Uh, I just want to get your thoughts real quick, hot for him. Uh, VX14's lineup, do you think he's going to be able to make it pretty far? Um, I'm not sure. The Priest, like, there, there is a Warrior in the other side of the games here, and he's going to have to face off against that if it wins. Priest normally struggles a lot. I think the Hunter is going to have trouble with the Warrior. So his Druid deck seemed very teched against weapon classes. That's going to be his kind of hope to punish it. Other than that, I feel like I'm kind of surprised his lineup actually got this far, but obviously he's doing really well with it, so he must have some tricks up his sleeve I'm not privy to. Yeah, well, it was it came down to the wire there. He did win 3-1, though, so congratulations to him. We'll be seeing more of him later, but uh, guys, make sure you head over to geico.onog.gg. You can get all the information about the tournament, uh, all the information about Geico points, um, about the upcoming opens, about the future tournaments, and of course, uh, about the LAN final that's going to be happening in at PAX at the end of August. The players today, they are competing for um, over 20 or over 30 Geico points, over um, about 17 World Championship points, and of course the $250. Uh, you can also, uh, if you head over to that website, get a quote from Geico, as well as enter in to win an official TSM PC. So during the next break, make sure you head over to that website and get all the information. Uh, the, ex the next EU qualifier is going to be happening on July 13th. Uh, so make sure you guys head over and sign up for that. And the next NA qualifier is going to be happening uh, on July 16th. So if you guys want your shot to compete in the summer circuit, uh, make sure you keep your eyes peeled for those. But we are going to go to a quick break before we jump into the next semifinal. But uh, it's going to be Vinib versus Powder coming up right after this break. See you soon.